Hey, welcome to my fashion vlog. <laughs> I wear this. I wear this because I'm not good with the sun. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's become more of a problem in recent years. I get shingles really easily. Like uh, when I was a kid, I had chicken pox four times, which uh, they say you're not supposed to be able to get chicken pox more than once, but Sylvie can. And then on top of that, I also got shingles a bunch of times. Uh, and here in Thailand, when we would like travel and fight a lot, I don't think it was the fighting. It's mostly the traveling because it happened when we went to Bangkok this one time when I was filming the intensive with Parahat and I wasn't fighting, but I got shingles like twice in a month and a half that we were in Bangkok. It was, it was really awful. So I try to stay out of the sun and slave to fashion. Those are awesome hats. Um, I fought on Friday. Today is Monday. Uh, and I just went back to training. So I'm, I'm running back home. And uh, this is the thing that um, I made a short. I make these shorts on YouTube and they go on Instagram and Facebook too. But I think shorts are technically a, a term used for the YouTube platform. It's an enormous parrot up in this tree up there. I suspect it was domesticated and then got loose. Let me see if I can even get that there you go. Like, how do you make it so that your shins don't hurt and uh, get sore and clashed and all this stuff when you're fighting? So. He is amazing. What a beauty. I don't run into parrots out of nowhere. That's kind of amazing. Uh, and he's very, very loud. Um, so in this short, it's 30 seconds long. So really what I'm saying is that there's no shortcut to conditioning your shins. There's no, like hitting it with a broomstick or rolling bottles on it or whatever the thing is that people are telling you you should do in order to condition your shins. Like the thing that conditions your shins is just kicking heavy bags and pads and then people as you're fighting all the time, like just training all the, all the time. So if you come to Thailand and you know, you start kicking and you're training twice a day, usually people get like really, really purple shins. We call them baby legs in Thai uh, for like, I don't know, maybe two weeks and then they start toughening up a little bit but then the like when I fight it doesn't hurt my shins anymore this takes years so I had this fight on Friday and to be fair I think I threw like no middle kicks at all whatsoever I threw some leg kicks but I blocked a lot of middle kicks with my shin so whenever there's a shin to shin contact in my fights I always win those I've never lost those I have split my shin open but I couldn't feel it. Like, I literally don't feel my shins anymore. And, uh, my shins are fine. Like, I don't have any mouse, like, knots. I don't have any knots on them. I didn't have to do any hot water treatment. They're not sore in any way. Um, I went back to kicking pads today. Um, the pads there are pretty hard, actually. And, uh, nothing. Not, not sore at all whatsoever. So, I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked on that. Like, um, I probably wouldn't have noticed other than that I had just made this video. Like, I honestly just wouldn't have thought about it because just I don't, I literally don't feel my shins anymore. But the reason I'm thinking about it now, other than making this short, is that... Sorry, I had to restart that. Is that, uh, I'm sore. <laughs> my shins aren't sore. My body is sore. Uh, and it kind of feels like, um... It's a little bit of like Dom's like after you've worked out and did leg day or whatever like that kind of soreness but it's more of a um, ambient soreness that's a little bit like when you're sick like when you have the flu and you're just kind of sore that's what I feel like I'm I'm way more sore than I thought I was gonna be and I think I just forgot like because when I fight there's a lot of clinching involved and I'm usually fighting people who are bigger than me a lot of the like tension and strain of a fight is uh is what I feel after a fight it's just this kind of like uh, ambient soreness from having been wrestling with someone basically who's a lot bigger than me it makes me very tired so even though I went back to training today 
I was very tired in training and running back home. Like I'm not like bursting with energy. So getting back to training right away is something that I'm kind of known for. <laughs> Tavia at Sore Clean Me is, uh, I've been training at Sore Clean Me in the afternoons for oh, six, eight months now. Like I think it's been quite a long time, but he talks the way that my trainer crew knew at Petra Rome when I was there for nine years. Uh, when I would come back right after a fight, they always would just be like shaking their head and they're like, how come my fighters, like how come my boys don't come back immediately? <laughs> He's like, my boys, Tapio was like, my boys take 10, 14 days off. And I was laughing because my clinching partner there, his name is Bank, he fought the day after me. So I fought on the 29th and he fought on the 30th. And so I was laughing and I was like, oh, well, Bank will be back tomorrow because he fought the day after me. <laughs> and Tapio was like, he's not going to be back here for like two weeks. And then even then he'll say that he has something wrong with them and he won't train. And I was, it's funny to me because my motivation, like the reason I want to get back to training right away is because I love it. And because it's this thing that, I don't know, kind of keeps me sane and it's, it's what I've devoted myself to. And I'm uh, eager to work on things and being tired or even hurt a little bit, things like this, those aren't the reasons I wouldn't go to training. Like the reasons I wouldn't go to training are if I'm sick and the boys have fights coming up and I don't want to get anyone else sick or like if I'm mentally unable to go, like my, my mental walls are much higher and much more impervious than my physical walls. And it's just different for different people. Like uh, these boys, when they fight, that's kind of the way they get a couple of days off is like, you don't fight the day before your fight. If you have to cut weight, you have like a lighter training for a couple of days. Like all of this stuff is like kind of the reason you fight is because you get a little bit of time off from it. So I think it's, it's kind of funny that uh, these, these trainers are like, how come my boys can't be like that? And I'm like, they just have completely different uh, North stars than I do, I guess, in what I'm doing. Um, but in being sore, in being more tired than I thought I was going to be. Um, I, I feel it's honestly a little bit like when you come back from being sick is like, I should not feel amazing. Like if you've been sick and you had to take a couple of days off, you don't come back being like, I just had a couple of days off. I'm going to feel awesome. You're like, I just had a couple of days off. And so I'm like starting uphill midway up a hill. It's going to be really hard. And you have to give yourself a little bit of slack and a couple of days to kind of like regain the pace that you had before. Uh, and so that's kind of how I see when you come back to training after a fight, even if you don't come back as fast as I do, that's fine. Even if you come back after a week and you let yourself really rest and like take a good rest, if you're like bank and you take two weeks off, even taking that much time off, you're not going to come back being like, oh, I rested so much. Now I'm just going to smash it. You've just had two weeks off. So you have to kind of like start back and kind of like repace yourself a little bit. Um, it's hard to stop. That's why. That's why. For years and years and years, I just never stopped. Is that it's very, very hard to stop and start again. Um, but yeah, I feel like with the start of the new year, um, even just the, the first couple of weeks of this year, I have some pretty exciting things to look forward to. Um, I don't really think in terms of like calendar years of like this year I'm going to do this or make resolutions or that. And I'm not against it. I just honestly don't think of time in that way. Like. Uh, even I just had my birthday in November. I don't think of like this year at this age. I'm gonna be this way I just I kind of don't think of time as having these kind of like anchor points, I guess um, But that said um, These first couple of weeks of January. I have some pretty exciting things that I'm looking forward to we're um, filming for the Muay Thai library with uh, Some pretty exciting people that I'm stoked to get in there. I love this project. I really love the Muay Thai library project and um there are a couple of really, really big trips that we're going to have to take in order to try to get some very, very hard to get uh, folks. And those will take a little bit of planning, but just this coming week we have a couple. And um, Fanny, who's a fighter from Greece, she's amazing. She's been fighting in Thailand longer than I have. Um, she's fighting on RWS and she asked me to come corner for her. So uh, that hasn't happened yet, but she asked me and I very, very excitedly said yes. So that's something I'm looking forward to. Um, go corner for Fanny and uh she's amazing and she's I cannot say enough great things about her um and I don't think I've ever been in her corner like I've watched her fight before for sure um 
And many, many years ago, she fought this woman who just won a big tournament. It's one of these things where you're like, these fighters have been around for so long. Like you actually have classes of fighters. And what I mean by that is like, in Thailand, your age matters a lot. Uh, like when you talk to fighters about other fighters, like if I'm talking to golden age fighters and I talk about someone, they'll say like, oh, he's Rune P or he's Rune Nong. And they mean like that person is older or younger than me. And it can be like three years. And they're like, that person is not within my age class. Like that's not my school class. And it's like school where you're like, that person was below my grade or that person was above my grade. And maybe you have a little bit of crossover interaction, but like you stick to your own grade, like your own age class is who you know. And uh, with female fighters, because there's so fewer of us, um, there are always these cycles of like women who come and they stay for, you know, three, five, seven years, something like that. And then they go and they're just gone. And, like, I don't know where they are. Um, but there are cycles, there are like classes of women who come through and it's true for Thai women as well. Like there are some women who have had very, very long presence. Mary has been fighting for so long. Um, Tanan Chinook is now in China, but she was fighting for a really long time. But like there are lots of fighters who just kind of have stopped fighting and they've disappeared. Like that's part of my class, but they're gone. And then there are women who were from classes before me, like Sao Singh is from before me, um, but she had this like second role when uh, entertainment Muay Thai was really picking up and she was a uh, headhunter for hardcore and super champ and things like this so it's kind of amazing and, and Fanny is like that in that she's she's one of these classes from like an old class that's just still here and still been around and a lot of the women who she's fought are people who have been on the circuit for a really long time like throughout the years like very very recognizable names I think it's kind of hard um for me when I'm talking to people or like relating to people that like people have very different depths of water inside the Thai scene of Muay Thai in Thailand. Um, so people think that they, they know what they're talking about because they know these six fighters who appear on TV for the past year or something. And it's like, yes, those, those are fighters. Those are good fighters. Those are people who pay attention to, but, then they want to talk as though like this is the entire scene and you're like there is a fucking well way underneath that <laughs> that's been going on for so much longer and has so many root systems and they stretch out really far and like it's just kind of uh people are just at very very different depths um and and so when you're talking to people and you're kind of relating to things you're like i knew this person or i know about that person or yes i recognize this woman who seems to be coming out of nowhere but actually was a really really great fighter eight years ago or something um it's just a a familiarity and an investment honestly in uh in this world and there are people who simply haven't had enough time here to know all these people and then there are people who just aren't as invested i used to laugh uh this many years ago many many years ago someone was challenging uh online they were like who has sylvie fought and i was laughing because i'm like one fucking everyone but two name some female fighters like who do you know at 45 to 50 kilos who you think that i've not fought or dodged or whatever like people don't have a handful of names that they know well that they're like oh have you been fighting the right people i'm like i know so many fighters in like multiple multiple weight classes over many many years to the point where I'm actually like surprised when I see a fighter who I didn't know about at like a weight class that's near mine. I'm like, how, how do I not know about this person? <laughs> like, where did she come from? And uh, they're kind of amazing. Like Nong Nuk uh, is kind of big in Thailand right now. She's, I don't know, like 49 to 52 kilos or something like this. And she seemingly came out of nowhere, but she is fully fucking formed. She's like an Athena where she just came out of nowhere seemingly but like fully great. And she's been improving and getting really, really a lot better from already being good over the past couple of years. And um, Sine John was like that. Nung Biu was like that many years ago. And then she just kind of vanished. Um, I still see her around, but she's not fighting. It's one of these things. It's like, it's, it's an incredibly, incredibly deep and wide pool. And, uh, Acting like it's shallow is just funny. Like, it's just funny when people uh, 
you know, have their toe in the water and think that they're experiencing the whole lake or whatever. So, I don't know. I'm rambling. I'm going to get back to my run. Uh, but yeah.